Welcome to Good Kraken, episode 114. My name is Devin Stanford, a.k.a. the five-star man. That's what everybody calls me, you know, right? Not not the other ones, but, but that one, you know. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I've heard I've heard you are one Devin the five swipe man. But 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 not that one. The <laughs> not that one. The today it's five stars. <laughs> but the five star man with the ten finger plan. Also not that one. <laughs> <laughs> Joining me today is my beautiful little cherry blossom, Garrick B. Eakin, aka the Vermilion Beard. How you doing, my dude? Uh, chillin' dog. I actually uh, did just finish uh, be eaten uh, just before the the uh, episode started today. Cause boy, dude, was I like running late. I got home late, and then we got started on dinner late, and then we didn't have enough ingredients for dinner. So I was like, all right, I'll run across the street to Winco, and then Winco didn't have what I needed, so I had to drive downtown to get the Walmart, and they had what I needed, but it was like six o'clock, so it was like crazy busy because everybody else needed freaking dinner. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, like, I literally, like, dinner wrapped up, like, 30 minutes before the show started, and then you saw me eat when you showed up. Hey, Winco, sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I'm, serious. I'm at Winco so much. Like, I know. I'm living across the street. Like, I'm always there. Dude, you talk about Winco all the time on this show. It's amazing. I'm just like, yeah, you going to Winco? I'm just like, yeah, well, I it's ran like, across the street to the Winco. Yeah, you, you, like, smoke a little bit, and then all of a sudden you're, you know. Winco. Winco again. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's the it's the bulk candies for me, dude. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You just like, or I, well, specifically, <laughs> it's not even really the candies. It's like the dried mangoes, like the yeah. dried mangoes and stuff. Mm-hmm. Forget about it. Forget about it. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, I, dude, I actually need to go grocery shopping, Um, especially like, you, you know how I'm like getting on my new like health kick and everything. I have a Trader Joe's, a New Seasons, and a Safeway within three minutes of me. But I'm probably going to go all the way to Winco because it's cheaper. <laughs> Dude, yeah, yeah. Safeway's yeah. kind of expensive, man. I've it is. You really have time. to, like, coupon to make it worth it. You know, you yeah, got to put in Safeway. that extra effort. You know? They have a good selection, but you're paying for it. 100%. 100%. I will say, out of most places, they have some really good fruit of some produce for, like a, like, a chain grocery store. Yeah, that's not like a Whole Foods or like a like a mom mm-hmm. and pop like smaller like like, uh, yes. Yeah, it is, like one hundred percent. All in all, yeah, pretty good. I grew I grew up like right next to a Safeway, and mm. that was pretty much a pretty good experience. Like I never really had any issues like shopping there on the regular. We don't have them here in Utah you don't? like at all. Like no Safeways. It's a, yeah, it's a it's a fucking kind of a bummer actually. Yeah, the owner of Safeway is like fuck Mormonism. <laughs> Dude, can't even blame him. Can't even blame him either. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. just a bummer. We have, like, our biggest grocery store chain here is, like, it's called Smith's. And it's basically, uh, it's a Fred Myers that just got bought out. But it's still, like, Kroger. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. But we are not talking about grocery stores today because we are talking about embracing everything. Ubisoft shifting aging like fine wine and much much more because this is the good kraken podcast your choice for all the nerdy video game and pop media news reviews and discussions that you want to hear live every tuesday at 7 p.m and saturday at 12 p.m if you're riding this wave you can head on over to patreon.com forward slash good kraken show where you can submit questions and topics to the show get exclusive post show content and have early access to episodes before they go live on podcast and video services across the digital sea. <laughs> Yarr, Yarr, that was a deep one for you. But if you've emptied your pockets for the latest and greatest in entertainment, that is totally fine. You can watch us record the show live right here at twitch.tv forward slash good show. If you have Amazon Prime, you also have Twitch Prime, and we would love for you to give that to us to help us keep pushing out content for all of you listening or watching at home. But you can also support us by going to our YouTube channel, clicking that beautiful bell and big red button, or by subscribing to our podcast channel by searching Good Kraken, explanation point, and leaving a review there. Review. Review. Garrick. I saw. I saw, dude. Captain's orders. 
Join us Saturday, May 7th for our spoiler-free review of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. This is going to be nutty. Uh, I am so excited for this movie. Like, so, so excited. I know Dude. you're joining yes. us. I know you are. Uh, I believe Xander is joining us, and uh, Genesee is also joining us. I think we're having a Genesee. fight. Dude, it's going to yeah. be a big episode. Yeah. It, it. I mean, it has to be. It's a big movie, you know. It's and a big Griff, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Griff, I'm sorry. Uh, those didn't get made like someone said they were going to, but I'll make sure yeah. it's done tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, dude. Uh, uh, we were talking about this earlier. You and I both agreed that we are actually more hyped for this movie than we were for No Way Home. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Which is um, amazingly saying a lot because that movie really just knocked it out of the park. But, dude, I'm this. I don't know. This just feels like it's going to be something special. It, I'm it, really, really ready for this. It's going to be special. It's going to be special. And like and, and since we're on the MCU subject tonight at midnight. Pacific, what West Coast time, in America, PST, whatever the fuck you want to say it is. <laughs> <laughs> the, the season, season finale of Moon Knight is tonight. Hell yes, it is, dude. I After don't that like. I want to know how they're gonna condense this into forty two minutes. That has me concerned. That part, the forty two minutes. But yeah, yes, like Griff. I Watch party. Yes. We will party. be there. We are watching it. It is going to be very fun. <laughs> um, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Also, uh, to close out our captain's orders, I just want to say, please, please join our Discord. And that's right, Griff. Thank you for the command. I was actually just about to put that in. Please join our Discord. Uh, We're going to be doing a watch party of Moon Knight tonight on May 3rd at midnight. Well, technically May fourth, but May third to May fourth, yeah. The, it's it's the in between. You know that it's weird the, that time frame. Yeah, it's the land of the in between, as one Elden Lord would say. Mm. 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 Yeah, you should finish that game. You should. I'm gonna should need help. I'm gonna need help. I'm gonna okay. need a lot of help. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. I'm here. I'm here to help. Maybe here maybe, to help. maybe we can jump into that after uh, after the show tonight. Maybe. Mayhaps. 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 mayhaps you help me become Lord. Elden Lord. Elden Lord. Garrick, tell the people what we got next, please. Happily next, we have the new segment, The Helm. Ding, ding. Squawk. <laughs> do we not have the transitions this evening? No, no, we do. We do. You oh, just I don't hear. Just, oh, yeah, just, I can't hear him because, yeah. because Ernell's not here. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So, yeah, I forget that, like... Yeah, thanks. So thanks for thanks for giving me the reminder cue. I'm glad to know yeah. uh, where, where we're at. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Garrick, Garrick, could you, you take these first couple stories here and, and tell people what we got going on? Absolutely. Uh, for any of you who are new out there, the helm is our news segment. Uh, we usually take anywhere between like mm, four to six articles that just kind of pique our interest in the pop culture of video game and media news out there that's floating around in the last week. Uh, we can it in nice little bite-sized segments uh, for you guys listening at home. Uh, so without further ado, I'll jump on into our first story, which is Embracer Group enters an agreement to acquire Eidos Crystal Eidos. Dynamics. Eidos. Eidos. Eidos? I thought it was Eidos. I thought it was Eidos. Montre I thought there, it was Eidos. There, there's, there's no I after the D. Oh, so you're Taika. It's so it's like, <laughs> hey, to be fair, I literally screwed that. I screwed up Taika's name once on air, and that's literally the only time I ever said his name wrong. It's it's okay. Ernell and I say that to each other when we mess things up all the time. It's it it's, me out. it's just it's just the thing. It's just the thing. It's okay, my beautiful little cherry blossom. Tell that to Ernell. Gaslight Nass. I, I I can't because he doesn't understand <laughs> He's not here. the days. <laughs> doesn't do doesn't understand <laughs> but anyways uh embracer group enters an agreement to acquire idos crystal dynamics and square enix montreal for 300 million this is coming from adam bankers at ign embracer shared the news in a press release saying this acquisition includes roughly 1100 employees across 
three studios and eight global locations. The deal, if it goes through, is expected to close quarter two of Embracer's financial year 2022-2023. We are thrilled to welcome these studios into the Embracer Group. We recognize the fantastic IP, world-class creative talent, and track record of excellence that have been demonstrated time and time again over the past decades. It has been a great pleasure meeting the leadership teams and discussing future plans for how they can realize their ambitions and become a greater part of Embracer, says Lars Wingforce, co-founder of and group CEO of Embracer Group. Cool. Um, I actually don't really know a lot uh, about Embracer. Me either, actually. I know they're like, I know they're like a conglomerate. I'm going to yeah. pull them up right now. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's pull something. up some information so we can have, I mean, I I feel like this is something that, that needed to happen. Um, it looks like they're based out of Sweden is what I'm seeing. Yes. So yes. it's a Swedish conglomerate. They have oh they they own some companies we're all familiar with uh, THQ Nordic mm. Dark Horse Media oh they own Dark Horse okay okay uh, Coffee Stain Holdings uh, Coffee Stain is uh, the publisher of one Deep Rock Galactic actually okay okay so actually I'm actually oh so we're familiar with yeah. their subsidiaries uh, quite quite well actually yeah no I I'm definitely okay with this now here here's one thing they. This deal was for three hundred million dollars, which seems like a very small amount considering the IPs and the studios at hand. Don't don't you feel like that is the case um, as well? It looks low, but I mean, three hundred million is nothing to shake out. I just think it, everything's just kind of going to appear that way for a while because the Bethesda acquisition was just fucking mind boggling, well, right? Like that was just. Well, even Large. Bungie, Bungie, wasn't that a one point three billion dollar acquisition for Bungie for PlayStation? I mean, yeah, but Crystal Dynamics and Eidos like don't have. They have some stronger IPs, but they're both kind of like new newer. Yeah. And like in terms of like if you're just like in video game development mm-hmm. world, Square Enix Montreal, that one actually alone i feel like would have been worth maybe a little bit more than that exactly it's, i'm it's, not 100 i'm not i'm not sure what all uh it just square enix montreal has worked on specifically yeah yeah i i guess when when i heard this news break um yesterday i i was i i felt like a little i felt like I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just a really good thing, but it just felt like a small amount for all of those studios with all those IPs. Uh, yeah, generated it could from. be. But I am excited that they are. I mean, as we saw this news, I'm excited that there is a strong background here and a strong um, foundation for them to build off of as studios as well. Like this isn't just some bullshit like ten cent acquisition. You know what I mean? Um, exactly. So it, it's it's. Exactly. Uh, and and Griff makes a good good point here in chat. I am just super excited that they bought the Legacy of Kane IP. It gives him hope for new life being br- breathed into that franchise. And that is something that I've actually wanted myself. Um I'd also like Square was like very like disowning of the uh Marvel IPs that they released including uh including Guardians of the Galaxy, even though it actually performed yeah. well, reviewed well, Super and sold well. Of those. And um, th- that was they actually f- weren't happy with uh, uh, Square wasn't pleased with uh, Guardians like financial performance, which was shocking. Yeah, because that game did great. Like it, it did great in in mass media. But here's the thing, Square, you didn't really promote that game well or market it well either. I think they underpromoted it. Uh, if I just had to make a speculation, of course, mm-hmm. uh, it felt like they underpromoted it due to like the low performance from like Marvel's Avengers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I totally see that. Um, another thing is too is I wonder if so we we've kind of talked this this is we're getting in theory territory right now, guys. Uh, for studios, we've we've talked. So Sony has announced that they're going to be purchasing more studios, right? They have said that. I wonder. Yeah, they said I, they're looking. 
I wonder if Square is liquidating because they've had such a close relationship with Sony over the past few decades. I wonder if this is going to be something where they it might be like a Sony plus Square Enix type of thing, like how it's Xbox plus Bethesda. You know what I mean? I wonder if this is like their big get that is being prepared for. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh, also, I'm looking at Square Enix Montreal. Okay, maybe this actually this actually brings a little bit to light as in, in terms of like why maybe this this acquisition costs as little as it did. Um, it looks like Square Enix Montreal is actually far more known for turn based puzzle games for like tablets and smartphones and stuff, not mm. like AAA console PC games, which might. Uh, turn down the value when it comes to like that market acquisition a little bit. I'm sure there's a that's at least I don't know, a dude. Is is so, it the mobile gaming space like the one of the most profitable? that's where that's where you make money and in, in yeah. those sorts of things. Um, which I mean, I, I mean, even there's a couple of bigger developers that are like putting some time and money money and effort into like the mobile gaming department, like Blizzard's doing it. Um. I think Ubisoft is as Ubisoft is trying to foot their way in there mm-hmm. a little bit too. Like there's some, uh, they have like a they have a division mobile game that's mm-hmm. coming out. I think, um, and Microsoft like there, just got King, yeah, King. yeah, exactly. Like so, the people are edging into that market. So mm-hmm. this kind of acquisition uh, makes sense. Like right, this is this is going to be like that mobile acquisition that might help strengthen in the Embracer group because looking at the some of the other uh, studios they own, um, a lot of them are more the stuff that we're you know, mm. comfortable and known with, which is like the PC and console stuff. Mm-hmm. So maybe this is them edging into that market. Yeah, yeah, 100 percent. And uh, just before we move on to our next story here, uh, Griff says uh, the mobile gaming industry makes about one hundred and fifty billion annually. And just exactly. so everybody knows, <laughs> that is coming from a mobile gaming developer. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what he do. He know. Yep. 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 So, um, yeah. Hit him with the next one, my friend. Yes. Uh, goddamn shame Ernell's not here uh, for this one because I'm sure he has he has thoughts. But <laughs> Fast X, uh, Luis Leterrier to replace Justin Lee as director. Uh, this is coming from Adam B. Very and Matt Donnelly from Variety. The decision comes less than a week after Lynn's surprise departure from the helm of the 10th anniversary installment in the main Fast and Furious movie franchise. A terrier who beat out numerous candidates for the job, per sources, is Universal uh, Universal's Pictures' first choice, and uh, and schedules are still being hammered out. He comes to the franchise with a wide array of experience in the action realm. He expanded his directing career in 2005 with two mostly budgeted action showcases for Jet Li's Unleashed and Jason Statham's Transporter 2. Okay, I like Transporter 2. Me too. Uh, he That's... has transitioned into studio temples with 2008's the incredible hulk 2010's class of the titans and 2013's now you see me uh all those are kind of mixed but none of them are irredeemable Mm -hmm. Uh, after a box office stumble with the 2016 sarah uh sasha baron cohen sasha uh, her name is always a mouthful sasha baron cohen's vehicle uh vehicle the brothers grimsby the french filmmaker turned to television with two netflix hit series 2019's the dark crystal age of resistance which if you like the dark crystal does slap and 2021's lupin his next feature the french language action film the takedown will debut on the streamer on may 6th what's the streamer Uh, I think I think they're just referring. I think they just didn't want to reuse the word Netflix. I think they're referring to Netflix there. Mm, okay, because he's okay. got two other series previously. You no, know, I'll watch there, it so if it's on Netflix. One. If it's on Netflix, I'll watch it. I will. Yeah, I will absolutely. say, uh, you know, I enjoyed uh, Clash of the Titans. I did. I enjoyed that movie. That's just because I'm. Uh, I I just love Roman and Greek mythology. That's just me. And, yeah, same. Uh, Huge fan of that. Jet Li Unleashed was amazing and transporter two mm-hmm. also amazing and the I best transporter movie. the best transporter Agreed. the best yep. one i i went through a phase where like i watched all those types of movies like every single one that i could dude i get it i get mm-hmm. it uh 
the only thing that I guess like would have me like minorly concerned, I guess, as a fast fan, is Class of the Titans. Like I did like it. Uh, the Incredible Hulk, I liked that for what it was. Uh, and uh, now you see me, but like they're all kind of like if you look at them and then look at like their box office, mm. they all did kind of mid, uh, mm. which is interesting. Uh, I guess they're really just banking on the fact that this has fast in the title and that alone is going to bring in uh, butts into the seats. But we'll see if he does a good job because his repertoire doesn't necessarily reflect a lot of work in like the high speed chase car action films. Mm -hmm. So like a lot of his stuff's more high fantasy even based. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I guess Transporter 2, but like that's kind of the only one. I, will, I, I don't know. I think. Well, Unleashed I'm as curious well. To... Oh, is Unleashed, a, is Unleashed a car? I haven't seen that one. Well, that, it's not really like a, a car movie, but it, it is an action movie. It is yeah. an action film. Yeah, and it's got Jet Li in it, so, you know. You know that's true. That's true. I don't know. We'll see where this goes. I'm. Um, I'm sure Ernell would have far more opinions than you and I would because he loves that. Uh, I like 100%. the Fast franchise, but he, he definitely likes and, that shit way more than And I than bet you he will reiterate on this this Saturday. That's right, the GK podcast this Saturday at 12 p.m. You know, I'll be there. Um, anyways. <laughs> yeah, he'll, he'll, yes, he'll definitely say something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, moving on to the next one. Jackass is getting a new TV series on Paramount+. Plus. This is coming from Ryan Leston over at IGN. Based off the success of Jackass Forever, we're working with the creators to continue the partnership with the new series, bringing even more ridiculous antics straight to Paramount Plus, said Paramount Global CEO Bob Backish. Why do most CDO CEOs, they have an ish at the end of their name? You notice that? Um, but Jackass, yes, orig <laughs> yeah, Jackass originally <laughs> aired on MTV in 2000 and followed a cast of performers such as Johnny Knoxville and Steve-O embarking on dangerous, crude, and downright hilarious stunts and pranks. Following the show's original run, Jackass evolved into a media franchise of its own, spawning numerous spin-offs as well as four feature films. Now the original show is set to return, although... Little else has been announced. It's safe to assume that Jeff Tremaine and Spike Jones will be back on board with Knoxville, Steve-O, Wee Man, and many of the original gang returning too. So, I have thoughts. I think, you know, you know, like all those new youngins, all the new people that they brought in for the movie. Oh yeah. I feel this like it's gonna mostly be those guys. And I feel like we will see original cast members here and there. Knoxville and Steve-O are probably going to be heavily involved with production. 100%. They're probably going to be around. Yeah, Jeff probably. Tremaine is probably still going to be directing and producing it. And same with Spike Jones. You know, um, I'm excited. I, 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 I big I mean, fan, big fan. You yeah, and I are huge. Obviously, yeah. like we've, we've mentioned we're big, huge jackass yeah, fans. Yeah, we uh, are. I will I will definitely be on the lookout for when this gets released. Uh, I also agree. I think it's fo going to focus more, far more heavily on like the new faces we saw in Jackass Forever because there there's quite a few new folks. Yeah. I think like four or five. I, I think we'll see like guest appearances mm -hmm. and like guest stunts and stuff from mm -hmm. like the original crew. But let's be honest. Some of those guys are just plain old getting up there. Yeah. Like and they cannot be doing this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the like freaking the and, skateboard guillotine with Steve. <laughs> dude, and I think we can all agree that we can just let Ryan retire because Jackass Forever, that was his movie, man. Like, yeah. He, he got fucked up in that film. Yeah. Uh, you, but, you mean you mean D Danger Aaron? Aaron. Yes, Aaron, Aaron, not Ryan. Yeah, Danger Rest Aaron. Power, Ryan. Yes, yeah, rest in power, Ryan. Yes, yeah, rest in power, Ryan. Yes. But yeah, Dan Danger Aaron, he. he <laughs> He went through it in that movie. Like, yeah, not he, just that. That was the one movie, particular dog. stunt that we were talking about right now, because I'm not going to spoil it for other people. But throughout that whole movie, it was just, he was, any chance they got to, like, fuck with him, they fucked with him. And it was so funny, especially uh, Knoxville. Dude. Knoxville just had it out for him in that movie. <laughs> now, Knoxville's always got it out for everybody. Yeah. So, yeah, but, I, I'm not like. I'm excited for this. Yeah. I think this will be a good piece of content. I'm glad that the franchise is kind of getting like a new generation that's mm -hmm. being like trained by the the OG guys. So like they're going to we're going to it'll get this. It'll still have the same feel. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody deserves a good 
a good jackass moment. Like all the all the 14, 15 year old boys just like us. Yeah. Need, need to be able to see that. <laughs> I know. I know. You know, I grew up watching that and like exactly, um, exactly. Live, living in Portland too. a lot of their original stunts were in Portland, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's like, do, do you remember the uh, the urban kayaking one? Where they went to all the different uh, yeah, fountains and, and ponds around Portland and stuff. And, like, they're yeah. just <laughs> they're so good. Um, but, yeah, I, I can't wait to see it. Uh, obviously, we'll be covering it as soon as we get any other announcements of any kind. Absolutely. For the next story, Ubisoft's Troubled Prince of Persia remake moved to a new studio. This is coming from Emma Roth over at The Verge. After an indefinite delay and months without an update, Ubisoft has announced that it's moving the development of its highly anticipated Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time remake to its studio located in Montreal, Canada. The game was originally in the works at Ubisoft's India-based Mumbai and Pune Studios. (laughs) The development of Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time remake will now be led by Ubisoft Montreal, the very birthplace of the epic Sands of Time trilogy. Ubisoft's announcement on Twitter reads, The decision is an important step, and the team building on the work achieved by Ubisoft Poon and Ubisoft Mumbai will now take time they need to regroup on the scope of the game to deliver its best experience for the remake of an all-time classic when it's ready. Ubisoft Poon... Hmm... Okay. Um, <laughs> Gary, how does this make you feel? Like you shouldn't be allowed to say that word anymore. Uh, that's how that makes me feel. But you, Dude, but, but you read that word and tell me how else you would say that. I'm good. I think I'm going to pass. I'm gonna, you handled that beautifully. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not you even see gonna, what I mean? I'm not even going to like that. I'm going to leave that alone. Do you like that? Uh, you like that initial pause? I'm like, hmm. Okay. Mm. Mm. Uh, mm. Anyhow, look. <laughs> mm. Oh, so, I'm gonna lose it. After the initial, after like the indefinite delay announcement, I was already like a little wary of this. I just, but it's it's one of those things where like I guess it's the delay was already in effect. We're just kind of getting an update at this point, right? So it's not really mm-hmm. any development news. Uh, we're just getting confirmation that they're doing stuff during the uh the the indefinite delay to make progress mm-hmm. uh since this was since uh you know ubisoft montreal was the original that's where like the, the franchise was born you know prince of persia and uh so it was prince of persia stand of time prince of persia what was the second one warrior within and then mm-hmm. prince of persia two thrones yeah i have warrior within i think yeah uh, I have yes that one. and and they are all unbelievably fantastic like action franchises that were like kind of birthed and popular around the same time as uh the original god of war run so i'm i'm this is an iconic game and it was like it, it was like a really really strong contender in the genre during its peak so i think them taking the time to get it back into its home place so like the home crew can be working on it uh and also add on to the all of the, the i'm sure copious amounts of work that uh, the other two studios have done, I just I just wanted I just wanted to be good, and especially because Ubisoft has been making some not tight decisions lately, like just mm-hmm. across the board with like with their development and their all their fucking NFT nonsense. I just I just want I just want it to be done justice. So do whatever you need, Ubisoft, but like really don't don't poop the bed on this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Griff just mentioned this, and I uh, I was actually going to say the same thing, but it, it inspired the original Assassin's Creed OG movement system. It, uh, yep. um, Prince of Persia is the catalyst of what Assassin's Creed became. You know, it 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 unfortunately took the place of Prince of Persia, right? That franchise did, and mm-hmm. I say unfortunately oh, yeah, because Definitely. I believe there is room to have both games because then you don't need to have either or come out every year you can work on a assassin's creed game and you can come out with dlc and let that have its its breath let it let it live its life let you be able to actually complete the 200 hours that they put into this game for you 
and then a couple yeah, years later, yeah, quit adding DLC to Valhalla. Yeah, we're not done with the original game yet. Yeah, a couple a couple years later, they can come out with a with the Prince of Persia game and let that be a nice standalone experience with a nice new game plus and maybe like some light additional content. You know, exactly. That, dude. That's like a, I would like a, love that. Like one of those crisp 30, 40 hour gameplays where you're mm-hmm. just like, yep, I did the thing. Mm-hmm. This felt great to be, and you can move on. Like, I actually liked Odyssey more, Griff. Uh. I liked Odyssey like better. Like I liked Odyssey more, like as a whole, personally as well. But like I just, I just love me some Vikings. Just love me some Vikings. You and every other white guy. <laughs> hey, man, I actually like. They're like re- I saw the Northmen the other night, and so like I was like, "Well, fuck, I guess I'll reinstall Valhalla because <laughs> it made me want to play." Yeah. Oh, damn it! Now, I just, I wish that those games could be like co-op, like at least two player. Yeah, and not Unity. They can be co-op, but not Unity. <laughs> yeah, not Unity. Or remake Unity and make it better. Exactly. Just make it work. I mean, isn't that yeah. kind of what the Assassin's Creed Infinite supposed to be? Like, that's where that's where we're going to get like, yeah, the multiplayer. I, I actually, I can't wait till Assassin's Creed Infinity. I don't know about you, but I'm hyped because it, it sounds like a very... I just need gameplay. I need gameplay. Yeah, well, it, it, it sounds extremely ambitious, right? It's, it's like, supposed absolutely. to be sprawling through different time periods and different settings right and essentially they said technically it's all over the world is, isn't that what they originally said about that game uh yeah yeah that it'll take place in like all sort of like the familiar places we visited in the mm-hmm. franchise before plus more yeah which i'm really excited to see i i mean look we we've, we've talked about it I mean, we did get Ghost of Tsushima, but I would still love to see an Assassin's Creed take in in a Japan setting. Like, Absolutely. I, I want to be a ninja. Like, you pretty much are already a ninja. So, but like, I want... just need to double down on that. Exactly. Like, let me shadow see, but strike. But if, if we get like, if we get like an Assassin's Creed Japan, though, it they have the they have the like the opportunity where they can do it way differently than what uh, Ghost of Tsushima did. Because, mm-hmm. like, that has, like, a samurai, like, heart, like, core. But mm-hmm. if you go the ninja direction, that's, like, its own thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like, 100%. Because, Go- because, like, Ghost of Tsushima, he, like, kind of falls into that path. But if you lean into that, like, the stealth, like, there's so many, like, tools and things I can think of that would just make it, like, unique compared to, like, Ghost of Tsushima. And they would be so great. I would love it. I'd love to see it. So Griff, Griff goes, hear me out. Assassin's Creed Australia, where you play as a First Nations warrior fighting the invasion of england that's kind of like what assassin's creed 3 is three yeah i i don't know if you've ever played that assassin's creed 3 but that's essentially what it is but based in north america um Mm -hmm. what it it, it, actually a very good game very good game you can get get past the six hour prologue that shit is so good it's not that long it's not six hours it's not i've played that game a a lot it is six hour prologue no no it's not no it's not it's 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 a few hours but it's not six hours Yep. Okay, he loves Assassin's Creed Three. Sick, sick. That was sick. actually my introduction to the franchise. Really? Not. Yep. That was my first one. I I started from the very beginning. Yeah. Not I. I I came started in late. From the very beginning. I've played every single one too. Even the little like side scrolly ones. I I actually. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Like. It's funny to think about this. I actually own every single Assassin's Creed game. Every single one. Not counting like the the remasters, but like mm-hmm. every single one, I own them. Surprisingly, I never really thought dude, about that. Um, dude, not shocked. They're all great games. I play yeah. a lot of Ubisoft, man. Yeah, <laughs> same. Uh, Far Cry also good, but we're not talking about Far Cry because we have another segment that we're going to be moving into. But before we move on to our next segment, I want to remind everyone that they can support us over at patreon.com forward slash good show where they can get early access to this episode before it goes public. They can write into the show and they can get this episode ad free. But if you're hearing this, they aren't on our Patreon. So for now here is a word from our sponsors. This piece of good cracking content is brought to you by Glide Mouse Pads. The world is changing and the demand for PC gaming and work from home setups has never been as wild as it is right now. Having the best of the best in PC accessories only makes it easier to get your work done before you jump right back in to the fray of the digital sea. And Glide knows exactly how to make that happen for you. 
Glide Mouse Pads is the future industry leader in mouse pads, offering beautiful, smooth, waterproof products made with eco-friendly materials and non-slip rubber in a variety of sizes that are guaranteed to help you get that next win. I've got one of these bad boys in my office at work. I've got one here at my desk right now. Devin's got one, Xander's got one. This bad boy is silky smooth, silkier and smoothier than even the silkiest of smoothiest of smoothies or soy milk or what have you. <laughs> You can go to GlideMousePads.com right now and use code Kraken for 15% off the Founders Edition mouse pad in every size available. Again, that's code K-R-A-K-E-N, Kraken, for 15% off any Founders Edition mouse pad today. Our next sponsor is Rogue Energy. Late nights are pretty much commonplace for all content creators, and anyone here at GK can attest that late nights are kind of our only nights. <laughs> Luckily for us, though, Rogue has figured out exactly how to give those late nights and even earlier mornings the supercharge that we all need. Rogue Energy is a low-calorie, no-sugar energy formula that is the perfect alternative to sugar-filled canned energy drinks and sodas. Every formula Rogue Energy produces is designed with optimal levels of high quality ingredients and no chalky textures. Again, we don't want that. We don't want that. Being the only gaming drink company in the world with four unique product lines to suit your task at hand, Rogue Energy strives to improve the in-game performance of gamers, streamers, and content creators around the world. Now, I know that we've been riding this train for a long time. You might be tired of us talking about this. You might not be tired of us. You might want to just support us anyways. And you know what? For those that do support us, we love you. But the best way to support us right now is to grab yourself a big old cup of Joe. When I say Joe, I mean this rogue energy stuff. I need you waking up first thing in the morning with a big old shit to get a big old shit going. <laughs> oh, wow. You grab your rogue energy cup. Okay, you dip that bad, you just scoop that bad boy right on there. You get that bad boy shaky dakey, you know what I'm saying? And then you're out the dang door. Okay, you need this beverage in your life. I cannot express that enough. You can head on over to rogueenergy.com and use code GKraken for 10% off any purchase of shaker or formula tub of your choosing. That's G K R A K E N for 10% off any shaker or formula tub that you would like. Now, back to the episode. Hey, welcome back, y'all. Don't forget to get your rogue energy. And give that bad boy a shaky dakey. Give it a little shaky dakey, dog. <laughs> little shaky dakey. Um, they did just uh, come out with a new flavor today. Uh, sour candy. Yeah, they fucking did. Yeah, we, we need to order that so we can tell you guys. But if you, if you just want to jump to conclusions and see see what it is, I recommend it. Um, oh shoot, did we, oh, we just got invaded, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, my Shut guy, up. hello, hello, welcome. baby boys, welcome, happened, baby boys, so I'm just popping in really quick, are you guys already on hands on deck, we just got we to just it, we just got here, Liddy, do you guys mind if I give you guys a hands on deck, because I have to, I have to, I have to talk, talk to you guys about something very quickly, absolutely, right? that's, is that okay? If I give you guys something, yeah, then I'll yeah, just hop but, on but, out. You guys can continue doing the thing. Before we get to that point, I would like everybody to know we are at hands on dick. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Ernell, if you would like to tell the people what you have been playing or watching this week. Yes, sir. Uh, but before I do, though, just uh, go ahead and click the little uh, dots thing up in uh, Discord real quick because you guys' uh, name template's coming up on, this, on the webcam. Oh, yeah. um, <clears throat> so the thing that I wanted to bring up real quick to you guys, uh, since my internet's actually working now, it's, it's great, dude. It's great. Uh, unless you guys told people I was fighting alien scrolls as well. But, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll oh, get no. there. Anyways, I, I haven't told anybody yet because nobody asked, but, like, I, I do know that uh, you you had some trouble recently, um, and uh, anyways, we won't, we won't talk about. It. We know it involves bidets mm -hmm, and stuff. You mm -hmm. thought it was a water mm -hmm. fountain, and you got sick, and yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately. Um, so I, <laughs> <laughs> um, I watched a uh, a new anime movie over on Netflix uh, the other night called Bubble. Mm -hmm. 
And I don't know if you guys have seen this thing on the front page, but uh, uh, I wanted to bring it up because this is such a fucking cool movie. Um, It's getting a lot of bad rap with some of the like diehard like anime Twitter people. Uh, Lord knows that they're toxic as fuck. So whatever. But uh, whatever. (laughs) <laughs> but I, I wanted to bring it to the table because honestly, like this movie is such a beautiful representation of like where anime is going to go artistically. Um, it is like, I don't know, 75 percent of this movie is in that cool, like 2.5 D thing that Demon Slayer and mm-hmm. uh, Attack on Titan do. And uh, it is it is just so fucking beautiful. The art, environmental art is incredible. The uh, the the motion, the motion stuff is fucking incredible. The colors are incredible. Everything about this movie just looks beautiful and stunning. Um, But mostly the story is probably the thing that holds it back a little bit. Um, It's not necessarily the most hype crazy wild fucking anime story possible. Um, It feels a little bit more like a Miyazaki light. Um, as, as far as like the, the story is concerned, it has some whimsicalness to it. Um, it kind of starts off talking a little bit about a post-apocalyptic Tokyo. Um, and when I say post-apocalyptic Tokyo, I do mean literally only Tokyo because one day, five years ago, uh, millions upon millions of bubbles came randomly falling from the sky and created, or sorry, creating weird rifts in how gravity works in Tokyo. And because of such, buildings started toppling down and the water started flooding the city. Um, Along with this, a giant massive bubble surrounded the city and nobody's able to really, like, get in or out. Um, And so the concept really is that there's... uh, Eventually, people do find out that they can leave the city, but there are some people that go there uh, to do what's called... uh, um, 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 battle core, which is a, effectively groups of people can use uh, the city as a parkour fighting arena effectively. And uh, and it's cool because everything in the city, because this weird phenomenon happened in the city, everything in the city is a, is essentially floating in the air. And so these parkour people that do this battle core thing, um, uh, they use the floating debris and floating bubbles that are all over the city to race each other in this sport that they do. Um, And in this sport, they race by doing parkour and they also fight each other. Um, And specifically, this one character, uh, the main character, he... uh, 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 was there the day that this massive explosion happened and sent everybody wanting to leave the city. Uh, and he wakes up and he's on his own. His parents are dead. Uh, but on this faithful day, many, many years after the phenomenon happened, uh, he suddenly finds a girl. And this girl is technically one of the bubbles. And that's not a spoiler because that's something that happens in the beginning. Uh, it is one of the bubbles that fell from the sky having had turned into a human form. And he essentially falls in love with her. Okay. Um, so I, I was looking this up as, as you're talking about this, because I'm interested. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually interested. I'm interested too. Like yeah. I'm looking, I'm literally, I'm on Netflix. I've got it pulled up. This, I'll probably check this out. I, I like, I first off, I love like anything like Miyazaki related, potentially like, mm-hmm. uh, it looks like it might have some like that, that, that exciting, whimsical Studio Ghibli vibe, which I'm also super duper here for. Uh, not to mention sports animes, anything with a sport in it. Let's fucking go. I will watch Let's that shit go. so fast. Let's go. Let's now, go. Now, now, here's the other thing, too. It is directed by Tetsuro Araki, who is yes. also the director from Attack on Titan. So yes, sir. that just seeing that alone without seeing the rest of the That's trailer, I'm already in. And yeah. it's got the it, same character designer as Death Note as well. It, it is it is absolutely fucking jaw dropping how beautiful it is like the the way that the you like the the artists use like camera swing shots and like wide pans and like all these things that you see in like m- like fight scenes in Demon Slayer and mm-hmm. Attack on Titan they use throughout like a majority of this movie. Like even moments that they probably didn't even necessarily have to use it in, they do that 2.5D effect, and it's fucking rad. <laughs> it's just so fucking cool, dude. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to bring it to your guys' attention mm-hmm. because honestly, like I don't think this movie is is worth missing out on. I, I highly recommend checking this out. Mm-hmm. The story is, has has a little bit that left to 
uh, to be desired. Uh, it is not necessarily the most perfect story, but it's not a bad story either. It's kind of a uh, um, a tongue. <sighs> It's kind of a different take on the classic Little Mermaid story. Um, and they do it in a way that feels anime in all the right ways. Um, but because it is a classic Little Mermaid story, girl finds boy, girl falls in love with boy, boy falls in love with girl, but she's not supposed to be there. You know, that sort of thing. Um, because of such, it is a little bit cliche here and there. And you will call some things that are like, yeah, that's going to happen. But honestly, like, I feel like, how beautiful the movie is and how artistically inclined the movie is. It makes up for anything. The story is lacking. That sounds awesome. I might watch this after the stream to tell you the truth. I don't, I don't know about you, Garrick, but I, as well as Arnell, we announced earlier that we are going to be uh, doing a watch party for Moon Knight later tonight, if you are interested. Um, God damn. Yeah, but uh, I, I might watch this right after the stream, and uh, Garrick, feel free to join me if you would like to, or anybody else who is in our Discord. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll stream it, it for it everybody. It definitely got onto the list. It definitely yeah, got on oh, 100%. List. Oh, it's not available in Griff's region. No. no. Well, guess what, Griff? I can stream it to you on Discord. He certainly <laughs> he's he certainly can, but you can also uh get it by getting, getting your Rift very own VPN. VPN from uh from VPN. We're not in we're not we're not we're not in we're not in any endorsement or partnership with any uh VPN provider right now at but that not could change. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> anyways, yet. dude, that sounds anyways. awesome. Um, you know, since since you're here and you you provided this, uh, I I I would like you to hang out if you if you have the time. Do you, do you have the time? Um, I probably have another quick like five minutes. Maybe I have to finish getting some last couple things set up uh, before like my everything is one hundred percent tip top. So far, it's going okay. Uh, so yeah, I have, I have a couple minutes I can hang out for. What's up? Yeah, Garrick, what are you what what have you been playing and or watching this week? Boy. Look, we played it a little bit. We streamed it a little bit. I've talked about it a lot of bit. Yep. Uh, but you know what? Danger, darkness, dwarves, motherfuckers, because I have been playing so much Deep Rock Galactic lately. Rock and stone! Oh, my God. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Rock on stern. on PC, <laughs> uh, season two has uh, just begun, and oh. on console, and I think I was on just this afternoon. It's got like an hour. It's got like one day and fifteen hours left, and then season two rival uh, escalation begins uh, with oh. the close with the close of season one's rival incursion. And look, I'm already here for it. I had an eight hour solo session of this game last Saturday. That's like me with Final Fantasy. <laughs> Dude, I was in it to win it. Literally, like there's just something so sweet about that game. Like finding and mining the ore, it's just like a little like just a little bit of serotonin and like every now and then and then you can just chase the dopamine as you like work for like all the the ridiculous amounts of cosmetics available in that game um and like they're doing some cool things with the new season uh they're making just some changes to the cosmetics the cosmetics will now cost their it will have like its own mineral you can mine uh that uh they've so like now cosmetics will no longer cost like equipment and upgrade materials oh That's kind of cool. and everybody was just like mm, you guys are making it so it's got its own like its own resource. Are you guys going to monetize this? No, because literally the sentence after they were just like, we have no plans to monetize this whatsoever. We just wanted to make it more fair for players so that you guys didn't feel like you were being cheated out of your upgrade materials to buy cosmetics. And that is how you fucking do it guys. Because not only that, these guys feature a free seasonal battle pass for all of the players Let's uh, go. with a hundred levels. Like the, the, these guys look, Ghost Ship Gaming and Coffee Stain Publishing really, really like I cannot stress to you how good of a co-op shooter and live service game this really, really is. And Embracer Group, who just uh, acqu recently acquired, just acquired. Eidos and uh, yes, um, sir. Yep, yep, yep. 
but just like wow like i i i think i probably put like 16 or more hours in this game like just last week i'm up to like i'm up to like 60 hours in this game Mm -hmm. uh since we first initially started streaming it and like I've kind of put it down for a minute, but uh, my brother recently bought a Series S, oh. and he also fell in love with it as well. Hydrate, and, my friends. And uh, I've just had oh. all the more reason to uh, to play it. And, dude, the amazing thing is, is, like, look, w- the amount that we streamed of this game scratches so very little of, like, the uniqueness that this game has to offer, because... Like, there's biomes that we never even got to discover, you guys. So oh. many biomes and cave types. I, there I, is... I want to play more. I do want to play more. Dude, It's I'm really into it. So, like, there is the... There is a radioactive... There's a radioactive zone. There's a, a poison zone called the fungus bog. The magma core. An ice zone called the glacial strata that has, like, underground ice storms. Uh, a place called the hollow bow which is the insides of a gigantic alien parasitic tree I love with that. red vines that like crawl out uh, <clears throat> this uh, a, a place called the dense biozone, which just features like tons of endemic life, like creatures floating around. Oh, my Lord. Like what else? the Azure wild, which is just this big encompassing dome like cave with just like bioluminescent plants everywhere. That uh, is fucking dope. That's dude, so dope. They have like an underground desert in like the sandblasted burrows. Like it, they procedure in like the, each cave is procedurally generated. It, it, I just like I can't stress how good it is. Like the the mining feels nice. The mechanics feel so smooth. The game runs and looks amazing, despite the fact that the game has a deliberate low poly art style oh man they figured out a way to like use it to its maximum effectiveness like th- I, this game is not it came out i think it launched officially last year like it but it was in early access on steam for a couple of years and was just getting more and more positive reviews as they increased like what they added to the game and like in 2022 i can't recommend like as as a live service game as a co-op shooter game uh this has just so much to offer players <laughs> so much to offer players in replayability uh i play this game no mic with randoms on like the hardest difficulty difficulty available and still enjoy my experience that's pretty good with with randoms no mic and i'm having a good experience like Mm, yeah that's that's that says something that says something like the game is just so balanced all of the classes feel super good like I'm so excited for season two to start like this this week, and I'm I'm just gonna dive into it head first uh, as they add in like there's like a new mission type, new cosmetics, all of the cosmetics that you didn't have the opportunity to like get with this battle pass now is just gonna be filtered into the regular loot crate pool that you can find inside the procedurally generated caves, so you never miss out. It's just I can't it it's they're doing like the, it is so player friendly. Like it is such a player friendly game. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm excited to dive into that more. I I know I have been playing it a little bit more with you guys. I've just been so tired lately because my life is. Wah! Oh, dude! My my I life is it. like the the Tie Fighter sound. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I just it's just been such a, like a pleasant pleasant <laughs> surprise to be able to play like, play this. And every time I take I get into a session, even with randoms solo like playing with like my brother and some other friends. Like I literally just fall in love with the game more and more. Like it's, it's been kind of like a unique anomaly for me. I would, the, like mm-hmm. every time I pick up the controller and get into that game, I was just like, this is, this is great. It's just so fun to play. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is a really fun game. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to dive into more of it with you uh, guys. This game is also on game pass for console and PC. So if you have yeah. Xbox game pass, you can enjoy this game and uh, do remember Garrick said free hundred level battle pass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's worth it, dude. It's, it's a really fun game. Yeah. We, we definitely do got to play that again. Um, I, I miss it. I miss it. It's yeah. a very yeah. good game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, like Garrick said, I have also just been dabbling with Deep Rock, not to the extent that he has. Uh, but uh, um, I, I kind of got like 2.5s. I started playing Halo Infinite again. 
um because oh the new season right the new season right? comes came out today actually i haven't played with the new season but the new season um oh, okay. lone wolves just started today um but uh this last week i just started playing again to to warm up and prepare and get back in the motions with it and i just want to say like minus like the hiccups they've had with release you know due to the pandemic um due to just the the sheer ambition of what they're trying to achieve with this game um the amount of content that they had beforehand it was it was good for launch but they just didn't come out with new stuff fast enough you know mm -hmm. um but the gameplay the physics uh the way that the guns work um some of the modes that they have and the campaign is it's it's like flawless right I mean, they beat out every other first-person shooter last year. Uh, we we had a new Call of Duty, we had a new Battlefield, um, and I know there was other ones, but I, the whole point people were is hype. that that hype for Halo Infinite. People it, are still hype. Yeah, it, they are and they aren't though, because there there's a lot of key factors and key pieces of of the the Halo franchise that's in every game that we're still missing. Um, oh we, really? Like what? Like what? We don't have co-op campaign yet. We don't have that. I I do I do remember hearing that as a critique. Honestly, mm -hmm. when that when that happens, you let me know. I will do the thing with one of you guys. It uh, do, here's the thing, it's not about just doing the thing with one person. It's usually four people that can do the thing together on co-op. Oh campaign. really? Yep. See, this shows I you do, how little I do I've like played. doing the thing. No. This shows you how little I've really played Halo because like I didn't. Mm. I always I think I only ever maybe played it as a two player experience. I think you should start watching a story so far, like in Halo, like up to Halo Infinite, to just like prepare yourself because there are a lot of story beats in the previous games that do lead up. Hate to that game. band. Hate that band. I love that band. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> continuing onward on Halo. Uh, so the it with the roadmap right now, I think co-op is supposed to be launching in late August. So we still have a few months before that happens, and then. Uh, the most exciting thing about the game is Forge Mode, and that's going to be launching a, a bit after that, like a few months after. But Forge Mode is when you entirely have the whole play box to yourself, and you can make all these crazy different game modes and maps yourself. You, it's it's a map editor, like Tony Hawk okay. Park. Yeah, I've heard of that. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's how you get all the ridiculous games. There's the people put Duck Hunt, uh, our very own uh, Logan Hulk Brogan in in our chat. Uh, he, um, on uh, Halo Master Chief Collection, he made um, a version of Super Smash Brothers Hyrule, like the original, and set up the cameras and everything and put melee weapons in there. And you went back and forth and you fought like Smash That's Brothers wild, style. And dude. he edited it that way. And it, it, it was really fun. We played it a lot back in the day. Um, but yeah, uh, Halo's a good game still. And if you're looking for like a quick like pick-me-up you only got 15, 30 minutes to kill and you want to play a couple matches. The game's very, very good for that. Um, I, I, I'm a big proponent of Tactical Slayer, which is also SWAT in the previous games. It's like a headshots only mode. Um, that's what I like to play. But my other point five. I'd spend the whole time dead, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It is fun. Um, my other point five I want to touch on is actually not even a movie, a TV show, or a game. Uh, I it's just a want... bidet. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> well <a> bidet. <laughs> we did talk about that earlier before. The show. God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> before okay. the show. Before the show. Oh, um, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but you were the one. Actually, no. I brought it up technically. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this time, I'll sure. call myself on that. I'll call myself. But, uh, guys, um, I've been experiencing live music again. And, uh, it, it, it is probably one of the best things uh, to happen in the last, like, two and a half years, um, especially being, like, so connected with live music and, uh, you know, whether it's going to shows, playing the shows, traveling for it, um, like I used to before pre-pandemic. Um, I, I, I don't think there's no greater, like, feeling than experiencing that, it, it, at least personally. Like... Um, the amount of serotonin you get, the enjoyment factor, just seeing it, 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 like last night, I went and saw Turnstile at the Roseland Theater here in Portland. It was a sold out show. 
barely got in. There was like a big guest list and all the guest right. list completely got canceled before the show. I had to like scramble to find a ticket. I haven't done like scrambled to find a ticket for a sold out show in so long. Got in and it it was just it it was it was beautiful. Like everybody was singing along. Um it was good vibes all around. Somebody climbed up a pole like all the way to the top of the venue and then slid down at fireman style. But before they got to like where people were, they jumped off like stage dive style. Um, the bands were all really vibing. There was great like lighting production too, which lighting can, you know, having that show production just makes everything better. And all I'm, I'm trying to say is like, if, if you are somebody who likes going to shows, but hasn't yet. And I'm, and I, and I say this in a way of like, Please also be safe. I do recommend being vaccinated and boosted before you do go to anything like this. Um, I, I don't know how it is everywhere, but in Portland, almost every venue, uh, you have to be vaccinated to even go into the venue um, at all. Uh, but do check out that Turnstile tour if it is coming to a city near you. It's fantastic. All the bands are great. And I... It, it's it's even it's too hard to put into words because the experience was just that great um but yeah you, definitely you could say you should turn out uh i <laughs> no, i got uh, they got a they got a, they got a, they got a record called step to the rhythm so if you go to the show just step to the rhythm you know what i'm saying <laughs> uh boys i gotta hop out i will see you guys uh in here probably in about an hour um and uh i will see you guys then okay yeah thanks for joining Bye. us uh, All right. says Rock. uh command ban Ernell. <laughs> uh, Rock, Rock and Stone, Rock and Stone brothers, Rock and Stone, Rock and Stone. Rock and Stone. Rock and Stone. Rock and Stone. Uh, yeah. So uh that I hate is that guy. it. <laughs> I hate that guy, man. The guy fucking sucks. <laughs> Anyways, love you, Ernell. Um it, it is time to move on to our next segment. Garrick. Yeah, it is. Could you tell them what it is? Oh, I will. You better protect your neck. Because we're headed to the gallows. That's right. We're moving into the gallows. Tonight, we have a very fun conversation. And I wish Ernell could be here for it because um, he he is he is the one of our newest entries in into this system. But... We are going to be talking about, does the Nintendo Switch still hold up? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I will there's some, start. There's some things to talk about with this, yeah. There's some interesting things. I will start. Things. Can, with, uh, you mind if I throw some, some quick little facts out there? About absolutely. The, about the Nintendo Switch? You, yeah, throw some facts out there for I us. Did little, I did a little bit of homework. So, like, I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but uh, my Nintendo Switch... There's actually four models. There's four models of the Nintendo Switch available. Mm -hmm. So, the first model, the version one Nintendo Switch, released originally, I'm going to pull up my notes here, on March 3rd, 2017. Okay? Mm -hmm. v V1 Nintendo Switch. Version two Nintendo Switch. Uh, which that came out in August 2019, just before we got the Nintendo Switch Lite, which came out August or September 20th, 2019. So the difference, you're like version one, version two. What the fuck does that mean? Uh, I never read any news about that. That's because they really didn't say anything about it. Uh, honestly, the only big thing primarily between uh, version one and version two is a better battery life. I have a, an original shipment version one first package Same. like first round nintendo switch uh, i'll tell you what if you undock that bitch it's got like two hours two hours i get depending more. on like yeah i two to four depending on what i'm playing mm -hmm. yeah but the uh that version two the version two switch has about two hours uh back like better battery life than the uh the original mm -hmm. version one switch um and then we have the the switch light uh, which came out, like I said, September 20th, 2019. Uh, that's a handheld only version of the Switch made out of like a, which came in like a lot of fun color palettes, but it was non, 
uh, you couldn't dock it. it. Like the the Joy Cons didn't detach. It was it was strictly a handheld version of the Switch. Um, and then now we have the latest model of the Switch, which released uh, pretty recently, actually, just October eighth, twenty twenty one, and that is the OLED model of the Switch, which is a improved, uh, a little bit of improved processing with, uh, but primarily it is a higher resolution, larger screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the so, the console itself is still the same size. But uh, just to show you guys, um, so this is the the Gen One. This is the original one. You see this this black border. Essentially, they got rid of that, mm-hmm. so it, it yeah, is it is almost seamless. Space. Yeah, it's more yeah. seamless, and it is also touchscreen too. Um, but it, I, if I do remember, it is still a 720p handheld, correct? Ooh, that's a good question. I thought yeah. I thought they bumped it up, but I no, was just look into it's, that. it's a clearer image because of the OLED, because uh, right now it is an LCD screen on all the other models, but I believe okay. it is still 720p handheld. Griff's like, wait. <laughs> yeah, no, you are correct. Yep. It is. So, yeah, handheld, handheld 720, 720, and then, of course, it, it gets the 1080p when docked, which yep. uh, all versions of the of the dockable switch can do not just the oled yeah griff is go says in chat wait why is it only 720 modern phones run on 4k uh griff um this is a check, case check of weird point. <laughs> check the price point of your modern cell phone and then check the price point of yeah, the switch yeah yeah uh griff the switch is 300 dollars. a modern cell phone is about 1200 dollars mm-hmm, um also this is also another case of just weird Nintendo shit. It, it really is weird Nintendo shit, like, mm-hmm. which is why this is such an interesting conversation, right? Because really, when you're talking about whether or not the Switch holds up, it's you can't really compare it to the like the PlayStation or the Xbox. You can only really compare it to like other Nintendo stuff. Like, you're mm-hmm. we're really comparing how it how it's fared to its predecessors. Right. Because Nintendo is so unique in the way they do their console presentation. The so, Switch is $900 in Australia? Dude, you, must, you got me all the way fucked Whoa. Up. All right. What, what's the conversion rate from USD to Aus, to Aus though? Um, I, that that I would like to know because then, then we can get a better idea. Um, Hulk Broken says battery life, fidelity, memory, and bandwidth. Yeah. Uh, one thing is... Um, all the Switch's models have very little onboard memory. That is one thing to note very as well. Low. It's like it's like 32, maybe 64 gigabytes, depending on the model. Yeah, depending on the model. Uh, I think one of, one of the first things I did was I went and I bought like a micro mm-hmm. SD card to expand. Yep. I, like, like I think storage. I have a one terabyte one. Uh, that's, that's the game slot. Oh, yeah, it's under here. Yeah, I think I think I have like a one terabyte or like a five hundred gigabyte or something like that. Oh, but yeah, that was one thing about this about yep. the switch is like it didn't it had very little like onboard like uh, onboard memory and storage, mm-hmm. and uh, of course a pretty big resolution dip between its its docked state and uh, handheld state. But the oh switch is it's it, it's an, it's an interesting geez Louise that's a really poopy conversion rate. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry Griff. That, Griff. I'm sorry, Griff. <laughs> I'm sorry, um, Griff. <laughs> rest, uh, rest in power there, my brother. <laughs> yeah, rip your wallet, dog. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I've I have I've gone through some weird like ebbs and flows with my switch and its usage and, and like in its ownership and its life cycle. Mm. Uh, I definitely like I don't know about you, but I'm probably I, th- I think I'm probably speak for many of us when like when i first bought the switch it was a breath of the wild machine 100 percent, 100 percent. that's what like, it is i did not give a shit about mario odyssey because i was just like i'm gonna play zelda i'm gonna play zelda mm-hmm. granted mario odyssey is a good game but i'm gonna play zelda. fantastic and and here's the thing too i didn't get the switch at release I actually bought it secondhand after it being out for eight months, maybe a year already. Okay. Um, but I, I actually bought it from Hulk Brogan in, in our chat. Um, yeah, mine. Yeah, mine was a I I mine was a first release. I think I got like a release switch. It was a gift for my wife. So, but mm-hmm. like I definitely, 
it's it's in, yeah it, it was a it was a Breath of the Wild machine like and Odyssey mm-hmm. was good like it because aside from Breath of the Wild it really only had like a pretty extensive indie catalog at the mm-hmm. time and it it's like improved since then but I mean like when you look at the other consoles like its AAA catalog is a lot smaller yeah than Nintendo and and one thing that they did start doing to kind of try and balance that AAA catalog is um granted you have to have a good strong wi-fi internet connection but they do cloud streaming uh to the console itself uh i did test it and it actually worked pretty well i tested it with control i um i did the cloud streaming demo of like the first like hour of the game and it actually ran uh pretty well um i will say this uh when they came out with skyrim on the switch i bought it right away because (laughs) <laughs> being Skyrim able to just too. take Skyrim and just be like, huh, okay. Dude, portable portable Skyrim, yeah. was a, like, that was a move, yeah. right? But see, and that kind of brings us to like the next point of like the Switch was a, it's a hybrid console. Mm. It's the first hybrid console. Exactly. It is, it, it is, it is, it's truly living in its unique space. Mm. And that's kind of what Nintendo's always really done well at is like they create unique gaming experiences because they like they're not worried about what the competitors doing nintendo is just doing whatever nintendo does yeah yeah and so we have the switch um which interesting enough like the switch actually came into being after not the wii u which was its last uh actual console but it actually they switched for a good time to nothing but handheld games via the 3ds Mm -hmm. and we saw three different versions of the 3ds we got like the we said the 3ds, the 2ds, and the 3ds XL. Yep, I had the 3ds XL, and so like as do I. For for me, the the Switch was taking the place of my handheld console because I I don't know about you, I'm always a person that has my core console, and then I always have a handheld console, whether it's been, um, you know, the Game Boy Color, the the Game Boy Advance SP, or um, the PSP. You know, which, uh, you know, that's a whole other conversation. I mean, right? The the Switch technically is based off of the PSP model. It really is sizing and everything. Well, it's 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 a combination of that and the original handheld deck uh, that the was used in the Wii U console. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> and um, I, I will say this: my Switch is my JRP machine. If it runs on Switch and it's a JRPG, I'm playing it on the Switch. Like 100%. I have mm-hmm. pretty much every Final Fantasy game up to Final Fantasy 12 on, on that thing. Yeah, um, dude. They have, they like, their back catalog is actually really good. Mm-hmm. They did a really good job adding a lot of the stuff. But yeah, there's a lot of indie, a lot of JRPG. Mm-hmm. If you're a Pokemon fan, like, it is. Oh, yeah. Uh, they, I mean, they're coming out with a Pokemon game like every eight months, it seems like now. <laughs> yeah, core game or spinoff. Like, we're, yep. just, we're just getting lots of like games. And then, like of course, like if you're living in the Nintendo world, like we've got Super Smash Bros., all, literally anything from the Mario oh. franchise, like, hits. And, like, the thing that was, like, so awesome was the Switch gave us the opportunity to make games that had never been portable before portable. Right, Skyrim. that was the big draw. Skyrim, Skyrim. <laughs> Legend of Zelda, uh, Final Fantasy, all these games that our entire lives we have been stuck, uh, like locked behind like a TV to be on, or on a couch to play, uh, which in and of itself is like it's a freaking revolutionary, man. Mm-hmm. Like I was getting to ga- I was getting to play games on the go, and like in a way that I never thought that like play- my like literal like eight year old playing my game boy color by the street lamp on the road trip brain would think Mm -hmm. right. Like we're like, we've, we've come so, so far. My, my favorite thing about this too, I got it in a time where I was traveling a lot too, whether it was like going out of town to play a show or just like going on vacation or anything like that. Um, Mm -hmm. it's made plane rides better. It's made riding in a, in a van with a bunch of smelly dudes better, you know, (laughs) like, um, (laughs) It's 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 a great console. If if you travel, I don't. There's no reason, and you play games. There's no reason why you shouldn't have a Switch. You, you know, at all. I I would completely agree, dude. I have like, okay, this is one thing I've always personally loved that I felt like Nintendo has always just 
killed. The accessories for the Switch. Ooh. The accessories up. for the Switch. I have, I have like, a first party accessories that I have. Like I've got, I have like an actual like an over the shoulder satchel that like completely deconstructs the Switch rig. Like it's got like a carrying case like for like each compartment, like for the dock, for the controller, for the HDMI cables, like for the actual handheld. And then, dude, it's like so amazing. I have a little, I have like a little Legend of Zelda stand that like pops out and you put like the dock on it and you can play it on the go. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, it's like just like a little metal stand like and it's it's like all gold and it's got like the Legend of Zelda emblem on it and it's got like little rubber feet and you just like boops and it kicks out you you rest it right in there dude. The accessories for this are nuts. It like it just enhances the already like really convenient features that the Switch offers you. Mhm. What what was like what, what, what like aside from like Breath of the Wild it, like if you if you like what's like your go like when you think of the switch like what are the games like you think of first uh 100% uh Mario Kart 100% Mario, Mario Kart Deluxe yep. I have spent tons of hours playing that game with friends uh Sir Chase of Beards thank you very much for another subscription you're at 8 months and he's like unless you don't want the smoke on sports he says um Mario Kart, yeah, yeah. I, you know what? Mario I'll Kart. I'll give you some smoke on sports because you know what? I'll I'll I'll, be, I'll beat you up. What's up? Anyways, um, yeah, uh, Mario Kart, Super Smash Brothers, um, mm -hmm. dude, Super Smash Brothers for sure. That's yeah. definitely one, dude. I have like, and I know like I talk about it all the time. Like uh, like uh, Jag in our Discord the other day was just like he's like I got a switch. It's like what's the thing? He's like what do you want to recommend? I'm like my number one recommendation out the door is Monster Hunter Rise. And it's like right because this is the second like core title we've gotten from like as a Monster Hunter game on the Switch. Mm -hmm. uh, Nintendo's always kind of housed uh, the Monster Hunter games. I actually my first like Nintendo like my I bought a Wii for mm -hmm. Monster Hunter Try. I bought a Wii U for Try Ultimate. <laughs> I have, it's the same game <laughs> <laughs> just with more monsters and stuff in it swear to god and then like there's been two core games uh on the life cycle of the switch uh that i've gotten to play and like dude it's just like the game's got a lot to offer but this this console has had a lot more staying power than some of its predecessors with arguably maybe i think the only thing that's kind of gotten it beat it out at this point would really is just like a is that the 3DS, the 3DS stuck around for a long time, but it also had like the 3DS had a lot of models too, just like the switch did mm -hmm. and, or switch does, excuse me. And like, honestly, it's just, I don't, I don't see Nintendo necessarily like going to like a new console type for some time. I feel like they'd be much more likely to enhance the switch is designed than they are to go to something new because this it's got staying power because it's in such a unique market. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I, I totally agree with that. Uh, Chase and chat says Pokemon as well. And I, I will say 100%. Let, let's go. Eevee was one of the first Pokemon games I, I played on my so switch. Good. It's so good. So good. Um, but he also says, honestly, as weird as it sounds, I really enjoy playing overwatch on the switch as well. Um, Right. And that yeah. goes to that goes back to like what I mentioned earlier, where like it's it's creates a unique gaming experience because now you have the opportunity to play a game that you normally would not be able to play unless you had like a gaming laptop on the go. Mm -hmm. Like it creates these unique experience. I like I played I went on a road trip when Monster Hunter Rise launched last year. Like I flew to California to uh, to spend like a like a birthday like with a friend like to celebrate his birthday and we played monster hunter rise over the weekend like mm -hmm. i literally flew out there to play that game uh with him and like i like i sat in the airport and i played it and i, I played it the entire plane ride home and then you know i got like i got home and i docked it all back up and i kept, just kept playing it. It, it just made like i literally got to travel and just got this seamless gaming experience across two states and airspace like mm -hmm. that's incredible yeah, yeah, and uh, when I went to Hawaii, all I did in my free time when I was not, like, out doing things in Hawaii, I was playing Breath of the Wild the whole time. My my flight had a tablet holder in front of me with USB ports on the on the back of the chairs, 
And so Forget I just, about it, dude. I just docked my my docked my Switch right in front of me, sat back with my official Nintendo licensed Pro controller, <laughs> uh, which is hands down like one of the best controllers out there. If you have a Switch, do not sleep yep. on that controller. Yep. yep, which is a iteration on the uh, the the Xbox controller design too, um, mm-hmm. and it's just rotated buttons. Yep, that, that's it. <laughs> Uh, which is weird. I don't know why they did that. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, but, but yeah, I just I just played it all the time, and it it, it was great. Um, I, I I think the Switch holds up immaculately, especially after the release of uh, Switch Sports, which really brought back a lot of nostalgic feeling from the Wii era, and the Wii was like Nintendo's flagship. Af- at that point, it was its most successful yeah. console ever to be released, and it it. it it was groundbreaking, right? I mean, it took a a console, a video game console that was viewed as toys for children, and it it was a pop culture phenomenon. It was in retirement it, it homes. It was in schools. Family console, the first mm-hmm. family console, mm-hmm. and it normalized the use of motion controls. Yep. Like normalized the use of yep. motion controls in games. Yep, and it, it pioneered that. Um, which we knew that the the switch had motion controls and everything, but it's never really been fully utilized in any super extent. I mean, the, with Super Mario Odyssey, you could like flick the uh, the hat, you know, mm-hmm. if you're playing with the Joy Cons. And I believe in Zelda Skyward Sword, they with the the remaster they put out. Yeah, they, the remat they, they improved the mm-hmm. doo doo motion controls of the original one. Mm-hmm. And uh, they also made it so you can play without the motion controls altogether yeah. in like the HD. Yeah, but yeah. like the the, mo- the new motion controls, fast improvement like mm-hmm. over what was on like the on you know the original Wii. But d- d- I can't I can't agree enough honestly. Like I do believe that like the Nintendo Switch does hold up. Like it it literally exists in a realm a gaming realm all its own. Like mm-hmm. it has it has no competitors uh, ex- except for the Steam Deck coming up. Well, really, it, the Steam Deck is out same, now, but and it's even, very limited. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's limited, but it's out. Mm-hmm. I, like, I will say this. It, a the, crazy the, space. The Switch is still one of the highest-selling consoles. It wasn't until this last month that uh, I believe Xbox actually beat them out in dollar amount sales for the first yeah. time. That That's yeah. and the, and, the Switch. over a month period, not like yeah. fiscally, over a one-month period, yeah. because the Nintendo Switch is just selling unit after unit and after unit after unit. You got to remember, even before the pandemic was a thing, before there was a chip shortage, before Animal Crossing was a thing, um, it was still really hard to get a Switch. Like, really, yeah. really hard. Like There was a time where it was just as difficult to get a Switch as it, as it is difficult now to get a PlayStation 5. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Shorter and, window, but it was just as difficult. Mm-hmm, 100%, 100%. And people were selling them like crazy, too, for crazy amounts like what we see right now with the next gen consoles um gary i i personally especially being the owner of one of the og models i really want to see some iterations on the hardware like a lot like that isn't just the oled the oled is great if you don't have a switch that's the model you want to buy. Yeah, just go for that model. But if just you already have a Switch, I don't think it's worth getting the OLED personally because it's not a huge improvement on it. Especially for someone like me, most of the time I play it docked unless I'm Same, traveling. yeah, exactly. Unless unless I'm traveling. And mm-hmm. then I have accessories and stuff to like keep that experience mm-hmm. going, right? Yeah. Because I have that original bot like mm-hmm. model with like the reduced battery life. Yeah, and if if you're worried about your battery you can always get an external battery and hook it hook it up to your switch it will charge your switch it will I've yeah it. they also have first party battery extensions too mm-hmm. because nintendo leave more like they're like yep you realize that like the og models like and there's nothing they can do about like the og models having mm-hmm. like the lower battery they're like but they do have an accessory and there's also third party accessories that like mm-hmm. to keep your console going so mm-hmm. like there's there's lots of options to like make it so you can keep doing it mm-hmm. despite like the shortcomings that like the console's original release brought. Yeah. Yeah. And um but I you know, I've always speculated this. Like how cool would it be if they came out with a dock that accelerated the performance of the Switch? Like the dock itself had its own chipset. It like it shipped mm-hmm. that see, I feel like that would be like the next the next the next step, right? 
because mm-hmm. like we've already like kind of seamless the screen like there's got to be something they can do that like accelerates the hardware when it's in like a particular state or even if it's just like it's it literally acts as like some sort of switch where like when it is engaged mm-hmm. that like extra hardware that exists inside the console is activated and that would be shut off when you undock it yeah and and nintendo we already know you do the for the switch right why don't, and you're probably sitting there trying to think of another quirky name for for your your next console which we we know that you're developing one you because you're nintendo why don't oh, you absolutely. just call it the switch too yeah look at that look at that we're doing your marketing for you yeah. nintendo just like, do that look. come on like uh, um garrick is there is there anything else you want them to to see them iterate on? Do you just want them to come out with a Switch phone? or? <laughs> I Honestly, I, I just want to see... I want to see an, a higher quality version of the Joy-Con. Yeah. That, like, a hardier version of the Joy-Con that, like, is more... Like, I want to see... Like, give me something, like, kind of ergonomic. Give me something, like, mm-hmm. that enhances, like, the, the already existing, like, stuff. Uh, and they have, they do have some, like, they have some Joy-Con extensions, but they're all third-party right now. Mm. They kind of give you, like, the kick-out grip on the side, so it feels like a normal controller, just, like, with a screen in the middle. But I want to see, like, a first, I, I want to see, like, actual first-party, like, improved on by, like, Nintendo, like, using their materials. Mm-hmm. Uh, and get, like, and because that's, like, one of the things, the Joy-Cons are pretty, like, that's where I feel like their biggest shortcoming is. It's, like... Mm-hmm. Joy-Con drift is a bitch. Yep. Like, it, a bitch. Not to and mention like, that. A new pair of Joy-Cons. It's difficult. 70 bucks, dude. 80. $80 for a new pair. Yeah. And, like, it's just, it's, like, it's, it is hands down the most expensive set of stock controllers you can buy for any for any mm-hmm. console. Yep. And so, like, and given, like, if, if you get console drift, Nintendo is just, pretty rad you can ship them in they will repair them or if they're unrepairable send you a fresh set if you've got like some of those og ones like i did like i had to get a new a fresh set of joy cons because mine were borked but like that's what i want i want to just I, I want them to see like the improvement the software in, in those controllers uh so like i don't have to update and plug my thing in every time i want to play anything because there's a certain there's a firmware update uh or at least make it so i can firmware update via bluetooth like i can with my xbox controller please yeah uh, and like so like i just i want to see them because like they've already expanded on like the screen like by upscaling and like giving us like the better screen like let's improve on that controller your controller design needs work nintendo like that's where your biggest shortcoming is with that console if they can mm-hmm. improve across those things like they just, just keep on we'll, we could just roll it over just mm-hmm. roll it over because the nintendo switch uh it, it's here to stick around it's mm-hmm. got a lot to offer uh, it's a great entry point for people who like aren't necessarily in, like the biggest into video games too and don't want to spend five hundred dollars on like a new gen console. Like this, like if if I had to recommend somebody right now whether to go buy an Xbox One, a Nintendo Switch, or a PlayStation Four, I would recommend the Switch. One hundred percent. Um, it it I mean the the Switch just has. It, it has staying power. I mean, the we're we're not going to be seeing Xbox Ones or PS Fours in the next like year or two anymore. We're not. We're not. Um, on the ergonomic part, I did get a case that actually has like an ergonomic like kind of design built in, which does make it a little better, but it's still like okay. kind of flat. So you see that. So yeah, so that yeah, that improves on it a little bit. It, like looks mm-hmm. like it makes it a little bit sturdier on the back too, mm-hmm. which was like because like that's one of the things like with the Joy Cons like as they get like loose in the rails, like you'll kind of hold it and it jiggles a little bit. And you're like, yeah, that doesn't feel. Yeah, that doesn't feel yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, I I've had this case since very early on since when I got a Switch. So, mm. and and I've had the same one and it's it's been great. It's and it you know it protects it a little bit. But yeah, um, yeah, the switch holds up, guys. It does. It does. There are. It is, it is a matter of time when it won't hold up, though, right? You know, yeah, I of course. I feel like we have but like two good about... years max, maybe, before yeah. it's it. It feels like a very dated piece of hardware. Um, yeah, before the hardware starts to really show its age, right? Mm-hmm. Especially compared 
to the stuff that we're starting to get and starting to see in the new gen consoles. Mm -hmm. Because, like, whether or not, like, because, yes, Nintendo's consoles exist in their own space, but after a while, it's going to be hard not to make that comparison. But it's fine, because I almost... I, I can guarantee you that by the time that, like, it that happens, Nintendo, they'll be ready. Like, they're mm -hmm. always ready. Nintendo is very good about their the life cycle of their consoles and when and they strategic and when they strategically launch their next one. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. So if you are considering getting a Switch right now, and you have the opportunity to get one, I recommend getting one. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Like mm -hmm. the Switch, it holds up. It's got great games. They're still releasing great games. Like if you're a Nintendo fan, it's like chilling in like to the Nintendo to like the Nintendo Directs. Uh, quarterly that they do and uh like the, the if pokemon's get like their own nintendo directs like mm -hmm. there's it is a feast of like content like because nintendo does direct to consumer um like ads and like that's how they do their game announcements now via mm -hmm. the nintendo direct so like boy howdy if you're a nintendo fan and you like for whatever reason you slept on like the nintendo switch now's the time because the eating's good 100 percent all right, guys, it's time to go over our schedule for the remaining of the week. Tomorrow, that is right, tomorrow, Wednesday, that is May 4th. May the 4th be with you. I am doing a gameplay stream of 7th Brevin, Sea of Thieves. That's right. I know Garrick's going to be joining me. I know Ernell's going to be joining me. Sir Chase of Beards in chat, he said he was going to join, but we'll see how that goes. Um, guys, we're going to be some pirates. We're going to get dirty and be some pirates and it's going to be great, and it's going to be fun, and hopefully our ship doesn't sink when we're doing a... Uh... Somebody is staying on the boat, and I swear to God, it'll be me. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll, I'll stay on the boat. I was the one who suggested it last time. That's you know. fair. Uh, I, I do want to point out, Kim Sushi in chat says, a dock should not be hard to buy, but it is. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've looked. I've looked. <laughs> um, but uh, Thursday, we are not doing the shipwreck show because we are all seeing doctor strange in the multiverse of madness that's right we're yeah we are we're the seeing whole that GK crew. yep everybody is seeing it whether we're together or not we're seeing yep. it and it's gonna be yep. awesome we all seeing it mm -hmm. friday we are doing a splash damage episode of destiny 2 the vow of the disciple this will be a co-stream with twitch.tv forward slash it's xander so definitely check him out um, we'll be streaming together. It's going to be great. I love that guy. Uh, we always have a good time with him. Um, Saturday, we will be doing our Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness review. This is going to be a non-spoiler review. If you want spoilers, please subscribe at patreon.com forward slash Show, where you will be able to be a part of that spoiler conversation. Um, Please let us know what you think about the Switch. If you think it still has staying power, let us know in our Discord or in our YouTube when this video goes up there. Um, definitely, definitely uh, give your thoughts and insight onto that because there could have been something that we may have missed. Um, it has yeah. been out for five years now. There is a lot to it. Um, but yeah, please. Do you think the Switch know. sucks? Let us know and why. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Tell tell us why we are wrong and tell us why Ernell should use a bidet. Anyways, this has been the Good Kraken Podcast, your choice for all the nerdy video game and pop media news, reviews, and discussions that you wanted to hear live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. and Saturday at 12 p.m. West Coast, Best Coast Time, right here at twitch.tv forward slash Good Kraken Show. If you enjoyed the show, you can head on over to patreon.com forward slash Good Kraken Show, where you can submit questions and topics to the show get exclusive post-show content, and have early access to episodes before they go live on podcasts and video services across the digital sea. <laughs> Yarg. Yarg. Uh... You can also support us by going to our YouTube channel, clicking that beautiful bell and big red button, or by subscribing to our podcast channel by searching Good Kraken! Explanation point, and leaving a review there. We gotta get going. But until next time, be good to each other. Danger! Darkness! Dwarves! Dwarves!